now i am going to discuss the third part of surface chemistry that is collides let's see some introduction first introduction graham a scientist classified compounds into classified substances into two types based on their diffusion based on their diffusion from a through a membrane through a membrane in their solution so graham classified substances into two types based on their diffusion through membrane when the substance in the solution is passed through the membrane some substances uh, they can pass through the membrane but some substances are not uh, some substances cannot pass through the membrane so in that way he classified the substances into two types one are crystalloids other type are colloids what are crystalloids which can pass through the membrane which can pass through the membrane in the solution these substances in the solution can pass through the membrane what are examples for crystalloids see salts simple salts hmm? acids bases glucose urea sucrose etc when they are in water their solution can pass through when they are in water their solution can pass through the membrane so these substances are classified as crystallites what is the second type given by graham colloids colloids these are the substances which uh, cannot pass which cannot pass through the membrane the substances in the solutions which cannot pass through the membrane that may be animal membrane or plant membrane are said to be colloids see some examples for colloids <coughs> starch gum arabic gelatin okay proteins etc agar gel so these are uh, starch gum arabic gelatin proteins agar gel these substances when present in water that solution solvent can move but uh, these particles cannot move through the membrane solvent moves through the membrane but along with solvent here solute also moves through the membrane if solute also moves along with the solvent that is crystallized if a solute does not move only solvent moves through the membrane those are called what colloids in that way graham classified substances into two types crystallized and colloids but later it is proved that Graham's classification into crystallites and colloids uh, is wrong. Graham's classification was proved 
wrong. You know, the same substance, there are no different types of substances. The same substance may act as crystalloid in some solvents. The same substance may act as colloid in uh, some other solvents. For example, if you take uh, NaCl, sodium chloride in water is a crystalloid. Sodium chloride in water is a crystalloid. But in benzene, but in benzene, it is a colloid. See, NaCl in water is a crystalloid. But in benzene, it is a colloid. So, these examples uh, disproves the classification of Graham. Because Graham separated some compounds into two types, na? crystallites and colloids. So, this example says that NaCl, as per Graham, NaCl is only crystallide. But uh, it acts as colloid also in benzene. So that's why classification into crystallites and colloids is the wrong method. The su same substance may act as crystalloid or colloid depending on the nature of solvent and depending on its size. That's why the word colloid is replaced by the word colloid is replaced by colloidal state. So colloid is not uh, the class of substances. It is the state of substance. Colloid is the state of substance. It is not the class of substance. So now let us discuss about uh, this uh, colloidal state. Colloidal state. Right. So colloidal state, what is the difference between colloidal solution and a true solution? Because of uh, more surface area, collides have different properties. You know, collides have colloidal particles have so based on the size based on the size of particle diffused solutions are classified into two types two types First one, colloidal solution. Second one, true solution. Colloidal solution and true solution. About solution already we have discussed. Two solutions. It's a homogeneous system. True solution is a homogeneous system in which a solute has the size in the range lesser than or equal to 10 power minus 9 meters. So what is true solution? So first let's see the definition for uh, this colloidal solution. A heterogeneous system, colloidal solution means uh, a heterogeneous system in which uh, the diffused particles have diffused particles have their size in the range their size in the range from 10 power minus 9 meters to 10 power minus 6 meters. 10 power minus 9 meters means 1 nanometer. It is 1 nanometer. 10 power minus 6 meters means 1. It is what? It is 1 micrometer. 
so if the diffused particle has the size in the range 10 power minus 9 to 10 power minus 6 that is called colloidal solution what is true solution see the definition for second one for true solution a true solution is a a homogeneous system it is a homogeneous system in which the diffused particles have the diffused particles that means particles of solute the diffused particles have their size their size in the range in the range less than or equal to 10 power minus 9 meters that means lesser than or equal to 1 nanometer so particle size is important here whether a substance forms a true solution or a colloidal solution that depends on the size of the diffused particle that means particles of solute if uh, diffused particles have the size uh, lesser than or equal to 10 power minus 9 meet meters uh, in a particular solvent uh, that is a true solution if uh, in any solvent particles uh, diffused particles have the size range uh, in this 10 power minus 9 to 10 power minus 6 uh, that is said to be colloidal solution okay so true solution is a homogeneous system whereas colloidal solution is a heterogeneous system why because there is a more size na particle has that's why there is another system another heterogeneous system where particle size is greater than 10 power minus 6 meters that is called suspension what is other heterogeneous system third one there is also that is suspension suspension this suspension particle size in this suspension particle size is greater than 10 power minus 6 meters so in that way binary mixtures are of three types binary mixtures one true solution other one colloidal solution third one suspension suspension is not uh, mentioned as solution that's why here uh, third type i didn't write suspension is a separate system colloidal solution true solution suspension is not uh, named as suspension solution don't uh, call that like like that okay suspension is a heterogeneous system okay two phasic system here uh, two phases uh, we can distinguish both the phases with our naked eyes okay right next suspension in this particle size is greater than 10 power minus 6 meters when some sand is placed in water that is an example for suspension when sugar is placed in water that is an example for true solution when <coughs> some starch is placed in water that is example for colloidal solution so what is the example for colloidal solution starch in water for true solution glucose in water for uh, suspension sand in water okay so in that way we have three binary mixtures here our focus is only on colloidal solutions already about this topic we have discussed there is a chapter uh, solutions in that chapter i had uh, discussed that about two solutions now our focus is on colloidal solutions right you know colloidal solutions uh, have two phases colloidal solution is a binary system in which uh, colloidal solution Colloidal solution has two phases. One is a dispersed phase. 
dispersed phase other one is dispersion medium dispersion medium dispersed phase plus dispersion medium dispersed phase is denoted by dp whereas dispersion medium is denoted by dm dispersed phase dispersion medium whereas in true solution also two words we use there we use the words solute and solvent okay solute and solvent a substance with a smaller amount is solute a substance with a larger amount is solvent in the true solution we use those words here what are dispersed phase and dispersion medium in place of a solute we use the word dispersed phase in place of solvent we use the word dispersion medium if you take an example starch sol generally sol is the word used for colloidal solution for true solution we use the word just solution solution means true solution sol means colloidal solution in starch sol what is a dp starch powder starch powder is dp whereas water is a dm dispersion medium so what is a dispersed phase the particles of whose the the substance whose particles are dispersed in a continuous medium is called dispersed phase the particles of which substance are dispersed in the dispersion medium to form a heterogeneous system is called dispersed phase what is dispersion medium it is the continuous medium of a heterogeneous system it is the continuous medium of a heterogeneous binary system in which the particles of dispersed phase are diffused the medium in which particles of dp are dispersed is called dispersion medium so now have you got the idea about colloidal solution simply colloidal solution is a heterogeneous binary system in which particles of one substance are diffused in a continuous medium so particles of one substance means that is dp particles of dp are diffused in the continuous medium what is continuous medium that yes dispersion medium so in that medium in that dispersion medium particles of dp are simply diffuse so that is colloidal solution you know colloidal particles how the some range what is the range of colloidal particles yes 10 power minus 6 meters to 10 power minus 9 meters that is the colloidal particle range because of a large size they have enormous area because of enormous surface area they have some characteristic properties colloids have characteristic properties characteristic properties due to their enormous surface area enormous surface area let us consider an example for that consider a cube of 1 cm side consider a cube of 1 cm side okay now what is its surface area surface area of this cube is 6 into 1 into 1 that means because a cube has 6 faces surface area means 6 into 1 into 1 that means 6 centimeter square 
okay one centimeter one centimeter okay dimensions of a plane so 6 into 1 into 1 6 centimeter square if uh, this cube is divided into 10 power 12 small cubes if the large cube of a side 1 centimeter is divided into 10 power 12 small cubes if each cube is considered as a colloidal particle then 10 power 12 colloidal particles have how much surface area that is the question so for that see a cube, small cube has 10 power 12 a small cube has 10 power uh, a large cube is divided into 10 power small cubes na? now this small cube have surface area surface area of small cube equals to surface area of small cube equals to what is that 60,000 centimeter square where surface area for large cube is say 6 centimeters cube only but surface area of small cube small cube I considered small cube as a collateral particle na? so when a bigger particle splitted into collateral range particle its surface area total surface area increases how this 60,000 came we can uh, calculate that how many cubes are uh, uh, the, the large cube is divided into how many small cubes here 10 power 12 small cubes okay now what is the uh, side of uh, this small cube small cube side of small cube equals to 1 by 10 power 12 cube root that means 10 power minus 4 centimeters side of small cube is because one cube is divided one centimeter side a cube a large cube with one centimeter side is divided into 10 power 12 cubes na. then what is the side of a small cube 1 by 10 power 12 whole power 1 by 3 so it becomes a 10 power minus 4 centimeters okay 10 power minus 4 because edge length because volume is equal to we have a formula volume is equal to a cube then a is equal to 1 by total volume whole power 1 by 3 in that way 10 power minus so surface area surface area of 10 power 12 small cubes equal to what is the formula how many cubes there are 10 power 12 cubes into for each cube what is the surface area 6 into side 10 power minus 4 into 10 power minus 4 so 6 into 10 power minus 4 into 10 power minus 4 means how much 60,000 centimeter square so in that way in that way colloidal particles have enormous surface area because of this enormous surface area they have some characteristic properties so after discussing the classification of colloids uh, I will explain what are those characteristic properties of colloids okay now let us have a dis discussion on classification of colloids okay